Hi, I'm Tin. Before we get started, if you are watching this video, let me thank you for being here. So, have you heard about water in the lungs? Or do you know someone who has that kind of condition? Well, that is what we call the pleural effusion. And I am here today to share with you information about it. I'll go through what it is. Its classification, what causes it, the diagnostic and evaluation, and the treatment for it. So, let's take a look at how that happens. What is pleural effusion? First, let's define what pleural is. It refers to the space between the chest cavity and the lungs. As for effusion, it is an abnormal high amount of fluid in a specific place where it doesn't belong. And so, pleural effusion is an excess accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity. Normally, a small amount of fluid is present in the pleural space, which allows our lungs to move smoothly in our chest cavity when we breathe. Accumulation of pleural fluid is not a specific disease but rather a reflection of underlying pathology. Pleural effusions accompany a wide variety of disorders of the lung, pleura, and systematic disorders. Pleural effusion can be classified by two. The first one is the exudative. Exudates meaning moving out of. Exudate is a fluid buildup caused by inflammation leading to leakage of the thin cells and other serums constituent. It is an extracellular fluid with a high protein content that has a fuse from the blood circulation out to the interstitial space, caused by local factors that increase permeability of the blood vessels. Exudative causes, first we have lung cancer, pneumonia, rheumatoid arthritis, and the last one is tuberculosis. And for the second classification, we have transudative. When we say transudates, it means moving across. Transudative pleural effusion is caused by fluid leaking into the pleural space. This is from increased pressure in the blood vessels with a low protein content that has a fuse from the blood circulation causing fluid to leave the vascular system. For the causes of transudative, first we have heart failure, hypoalbuminia or low albumin level, hypoalbuminia can cause a decrease in oncotic pressure, causing extravasation of fluid into the interstitial space. In conditions of severe hypoalbuminia, fluid extravasation may cause occurrence of pleural effusion. The next one is hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism causes pericardial effusion through increased permeability of the epicardial vessels and decreased lymphatic drainage of albumin, resulting in accumulation of fluid in the pericardial space. So, what are the presentations of pleural effusion? The clinical presentation of pleural effusion depends on the amount of fluid present and the underlying cause. Many patients have no symptoms at the time a pleural effusion was discovered, but the possible symptoms may include first, dyspnea, 
Dyspnea or shortness of breath is the most common symptom of a pleural effusion. As the effusion grows larger with more fluid, the harder it is for the lung to expand and the more difficult it is for the patient to breathe. The second one is the pleuratic chest pain. Chest pain occurs because the pleural lining of the lung is irritated. The third one that we have is the dullness to percussion. Dullness replaces resonance when fluid or solid tissue replaces air-containing tissues such as a kerosene pleural effusion. The dry non-productive cup and the decreased or absent breath sounds. Decreased breath sounds means that there is a fluid just like with pleural effusion. So, how does pleural effusion diagnose? The tests most commonly used to diagnose and evaluate pleural effusion include First, physical examination. It reveals the decrease or absent tactile fremitus, dullness to percussion, diminished breath sounds over the site of the effusion. The second one is chest x-ray. It can detect pleural effusions as they usually appear as whitish areas at the lung base and they may appear on only one side called unilateral or on both sides called bilateral. If a person lies on their side for a few minutes, most pleural effusions will move and layer out along that side, which is positioned downward. This movement of the pleural effusion can be seen on a chest x-ray taken with the person lying on their side. The third one is the CT scan or the computed tomography. A CT scanner takes many x-rays quickly and a computer constructs images of the entire chest inside and out. CT scans show more detail than chest x-rays do. The other one is the pleural fluid analysis. In a pleural fluid analysis, fluid will be removed from the pleural membrane area by inserting a needle into the chest cavity and suctioning the fluid into a syringe. The procedure is called thoracentesis. This is also works as a common procedure to drain the excess fluid from the chest cavity. The fluid will be then tested to determine the cause. Moving on to the treatment. The treatment of pleural effusion depends on the cause and on whether the person has symptoms as a result of the pleural fluid. The first treatment that can be used is the thoracentesis. Thoracentesis is a procedure in which a needle is inserted into the pleural space between the lungs and the chest wall. This procedure is done to remove excess fluid, known as the pleural effusion, from the pleural space to help breathe easier. It may be done to determine the cause of the pleural effusion. The next one is pleurodesis. Pleurodesis refers to the insertion of a chest tube and installation of sclerosing chemical substances into the pleural cavity and production of adhesions between the outer surface of the lung and inner surface of the chest wall in order to prevent accumulation of fluid or air in the pleural space. This procedure is the most effective and least invasive of all the surgical procedures available to control pleural effusion, especially those of malignant etiology. Another is surgery. Pleural effusions that cannot be managed through drainage or pleural sclerosis may require surgical treatment. The first one is known as thoracoscopic surgery. This procedure is effective in managing pleural effusions that are difficult to drain or occur due to malignancy. The other one is thoracotomy. It is performed to remove all of the fibrous tissue and aids in evacuating the infection from the pleural space. And that ends my genius hour.
Hope that you've learned a lot about pleural effusion. Thank you for listening.